All right, my dear friends, uh, more time, a little bit more inspiration for me to record another video today. Remember, every time you uh, view these videos, please make sure to transcribe them. Uh, I know that some of you want me to um, have the questions posted uh, so you can see them while I do that. Uh, I know it'll make life a little bit easier, so I will definitely work on, on uh, getting that done. Uh, it takes a little bit more time for me to do that, but I will try to do that, even though I would much rather prefer that you would listen and transcribe rather than, you know, look at the questions. But you know what? I'll work with it. I'll get it done. We'll make it work. OK, in the meantime, make sure to transcribe the questions, uh, the answers and the rationale, and then to transcribe it again into type text. So you can make yourselves some flashcards if you want to, but it's this process of listening, writing, typing, that's going to help you to internalize and memorialize everything, not just kind of remember it for the exam, because, you know, they keep constantly evolving the test questions. As a matter of fact, right now, they're uh, working on the new test. So, and, and people say, oh my gosh, it's gonna be a new test. Uh, you know what? Everything still depends Book right over here, the sterile processing ma manual. It, it, I disappear. So listen, they can change the questions around. It's their prerogative, but it's always going to be based on this book. So, and it's always going to be based on the same thing. So if you understand the logic, a little linguistic change is going to do it. The, the, the tests do need to be refreshed every so often. So this is how we roll. In the meantime, um, Let's go and uh, pick up where we left off. And uh, this is our fifth uh, edition. Now, uh, this is number five. We already completed four little sections. This is section number five. Now, let's go. There are two types of sterile solutions. The solution that is administered to patients uh, intravenously is a what kind of a solution? So there are two types of sterile solutions. One solution is administered to patients intravenously. It is known as what? Number one, external solution. Number two, hydrologic solution. Number three, parenteral solution. And number three, enteral solution. Okay, well, there's really no such thing as external solution. Hydrologic as for us is definitely a word that doesn't figure in any context. So the only two words here is parenteral and enteral. Mm. Medical term entero means intestines. Entero means intestines. So enteral solution means solution that goes into your intestines, you know, drinking. But parenteral solution. Prefix para, which means around. Ah, parenteral means, how do we get liquid into the body? Well, we drink it. We can also do it IV, but that's not, doesn't go into our entrails. It doesn't go into our, into our, uh, into our uh, intestines. So parenteral solution is the right answer. Number three is correct. And this is what we have here. Okay, now. Next question. I hope this question made sense. Folks, power of words is huge. You must study the words. Don't just read the book and bypass uh, bypass um, the words that you don't know, that you're guessing. No, look up every word. Look up every word. Use Google Translate or whatever you, you, know, you got there. And no word left behind. The device that uses spores in or on a carrier, usually accompanied by incubation media, is a what? So a device, very nice word, that uses spores in uh, or on a carrier, usually accompanied by incubation media, is a what? Is it a number one temperature indicator? Is it the bio burden indicator? Is it a biological indicator or is it the chemical indicator? Let's look at the question again. The device that uses spores. Now remember, all indicators are class two devices classified by the FDA. So it's a very important word 
uh, device that's used here. Uh, uses spores. What is a spore? A spore is a bacteria with a tough outer shell that makes it more difficult to kill. Now, what is that thing that we use and that we incubate in the department? What is that thing that's biological spore? Well, it's our old friend, ready for this one? Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Geobacillus sterothermophilus. How wonderfully it just rolls off of my tongue. Why? Because I'm a genius. Well, according to my mother, according to my wife, I'm not. But the fact of the matter is I sat there and I practiced to say the words Geobacillus sterothermophilus. So it makes me sound more intelligent. Guess what? It worked. OK, that's how I got to be a director. Now, Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Geobacillus, it's a spore of Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Geobacillus, bacillus, bacilla, which means uh, it is the uh, um type of a bacteria a rod shaped bacteria so the answer here is number three biological indicator it is a device class two device biological device which is incubated sorry i you know got on my soapbox here but this is indeed what the case is hopefully this explanation was thorough enough for you okay next question let's see what do i have here for you all of the following information should be recorded and maintained for each item of patient care equipment, except, except all of the following information should be recorded and maintained for each item of patient care equipment, except, except what? Assigned equipment location, equipment cost if purchased, ownership status, and repair history. Well, Assigned equipment location, yeah, we definitely should record and maintain this information. Equipment cost if purchased, questionable. Ownership status, yeah, we have to know whether it's a loaner or something that belongs to us. And it's repair history. Hey, was it broken? Was it repaired? We need to know. So the only thing that kind of qualifies under the accept is equipment cost if purchased. We don't care what the cost is. OK, so the answer here is equipment cost if purchased. Off we go. OK, next question. Uh, what should I give you? What should I give you? All right, let's try this. The decision whether to sterilize or high level disinfect an endoscope is based upon which of the following? The decision whether to utilize or high level disinfect an endoscope is based upon which of the following okay number one its frequency of use number two its use according to the spalding classification system oh i love the word spalding this is very good uh the frequency with which the instrument needs repairs and its fda classification huh what does the FDA classification have to do with um, whether to disinfect or to sterilize? I'm not so sure. I'm going to throw that one out. The frequency with which instrument needs repairs doesn't matter to how we sterilize or disinfect. It's use according to the Spalding classification system. Let's remind ourselves what that is. Class one, class two, and class three devices. Class one device, the one that comes in contact with intact skin. Class two, a device that comes in contact with mucous membranes, intact mucous membranes. And class three device is the one that comes in contact with flowing blood. Now, flowing blood needs to be sterile. Uh, intact mucous membrane needs high level disinfection. This seems like the right answer. This is what differentiates, hey, if I'm working with an intact mucous membrane, which offers us protection against uh, disease, then that would be the right answer here. A frequency of use doesn't matter. So in this particular case, number two, it's uh, use according to the Spalding classification system. Hope you caught all that. I spend a little bit more time on this, but let's go forward. Which of the following should be the center of every quality concern? What is quality? Quality is the consistent delivery of goods and services to assure 
patient care. Uh, you may see that my finger is black. I was just writing on the blackboard and I use my finger as an eraser. Not a sign of poor hygiene, uh, just using my finger to erase stuff. Which of the following should be the center of every quality concern? Consistent delivery of goods and services to assure patient care. What a definition of quality. Now let's see what, what we have here. Number one, internal customers. Two, manufacturers. Three, administrative boards. Four, patients. Yes, there's no more discussion. Once you understand what quality is, you know that it's all patient centered. It's all about the patient. So just keep that in mind. Patient centered. The answer here is four. Hope that makes sense. Let's do one or two more. Understanding the purpose of basic types of patient care equipment can improve customer service and reduce frustrations. Which of the following is patient care equipment that pumps heated or cooled water through a cool pad to therapeutically raise or lower body temperature? My gosh, what a long question and, you know, very little of it. You know, just remember that most patient care equipment can be classified as a pump. Most. I'm not saying all, but most. We're either pumping stuff into the patient or out of the patient or around the patient. And this particular device is pumping hot or cold water around the patient. Let's see what options they give us. Hot and cold therapy devices. Two, hypothermia unit. Three, continuous passive motion device. And last, number four, sequential compression unit. Let's start evicting the stuff uh, that we don't need. Sequential compression unit, nah, that has nothing to do with heat or cold. Continuous passive motion device. That's a thing that they use to move the uh, joints of a patient who, let's say, had hip or knee surgery, and they need to keep the leg moving all the time by itself. So they put that patient on that machine that by itself moves the limb so it doesn't become kind of stiff and, you know. So that's that has nothing with heat or cold. Now, hot and cold therapy devices. You know, I don't particularly care for this, uh, for this answer. Um, I like the hypothermia unit. Yeah, after a lot of surgeries, uh, they put patients under these blankets that blow cold air uh, around them just to keep them cool or sometimes hot, okay? So, but the hypothermia, hypo, prefix hypo is under or less. Thermia having to do with heat. So low heat. Hypothermia unit. I'm going to go with number two, hypothermia unit. Let's do one more question and we'll save. We'll go on later. Now, which of the following pieces of equipment would not be considered patient care equipment? Hmm. Patient care equipment, either pumping stuff out, pumping stuff in, maybe things like bedpans, maybe like, like an EKG machine, but mostly pumps, mostly pumps. So let's see. Which of the following pieces of equipment would not be considered patient care equipment? Suction unit. Well, definitely a pump, pumps it out. Heat therapy unit. We just had that. Okay, so it pumps the heat in. IV infusion pump. Yeah, definitely a pump. So it's patient care equipment, right? Last one, implantable devices. Oh, that sucker just sings right out to us. So it's number four, implantable devices. And voila, I think this is going to be enough for now. These things come in small doses. If I give it to you for an hour at a time, I think you're all going to go brain dead. Uh, I know I will for sure, staring at the, these questions and coming up with these answers. But, uh, well, more power to you. You know, here we go, five to ten questions here and there. Gives you enough time to scribble them down and then to transcribe them. Folks, if you do this, I promise you, your success is almost guaranteed. Much like sterilization does not, this process of sterilization does not offer a guarantee of sterility. Remember, we only offer a reasonable assurance of sterilization, a reasonable assurance of sterility. So I can give you a reasonable, a reasonable assurance of success. If you listen to my lectures, if you read the book, if you do the practice tests, and you do this again and again and again and again, over and over again, if you immerse yourself in sterile processing, you will succeed. There is no magic bullet. 
There's no one size fits all, but I will tell you, learning, repetition, repetition, and application, meaning teaching this to others. If they want to hear from you, you teach them anyway. And that's when you're going to know your stuff. Good luck. God bless. See you soon. Thank you for watching. Remember, please hit the like button, share, uh, leave me your comments. So far, the response has been tremendous. Thank you all very much. Keep on doing it. OK, uh, it helps me to uh, support this channel and provide this information to you free of charge. OK, so just please do this. Spread the word and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. It's an important thing. OK, I'm off. See you soon.